Hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and we're good. And we're here. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. We, since Miles is not here this week, we're going to be doing the uh, Camarilla characters. Get out Derek Stallworth. Mm-hmm. See, Derek should have a lot of experience to spend because since Starworth knew he could go back and rewatch watch those He's videos. He's been rewatching the videos. He's been rewatching yeah, like a hundred videos. Yeah, wasn't it like, shoot, I, I was watching through some of them, like, it was like, I missed a lot. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I think <laughs> you were in the first episode, and then everything between that and the like the interludes. He show up for his like yeah his his Derek interlude, and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you were off like having sex with R like for a really long time, just off yeah. somewhere. Man, well. Hello. And David's finally back. So David, you are starting at four blood points. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> You're the one who's constantly using blood, too. All right, so what'd you have for dinner, exactly. David? Exactly. So what was for you know, dinner? I've had to make a rule, I've had to make a rule for Jean that like he never spends blood. <laughs> but, uh, now that I'm Ryan again. <laughs> oh, now it's all, all bets off. But seriously, what do you have for dinner? Um. Uh, oh, what? Really? In real life? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have. <laughs> We're not gonna sit here and wait for you to eat dinner and then not ask what it was. <laughs> um, some uh, chicken, some uh, roast potatoes, and some veg. All right, acceptable. He did eat with them. They, his family, does allow him to eat with them. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So what happened was the mashed potatoes were messed up apparently, and Dad was really annoyed about that because so he was like, so you know, there's a lot less dinner on the plate. So a mixture of I felt bad for people being in a bad mood and thought I'd start a conversation and stay with them for dinner that might clear them up for once. Oh. And uh, also, there's less dinner to eat, so I'll get finished faster and come back up anyway. So, did you cheer them up? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> right. David brings joy to those around him. Oh, that's good. So, did well, you... because they know I normally don't have dinner with them on Sunday, so you know it was like, oh yeah, David's eating. This time. I see. So, does your mom or your dad cook, or do they share? And my dad actually. My mom rarely does the dinner. Oh. I can understand that. <laughs> I hate to cook as well. All right. So. <clears throat> Uh, let's get started. Oh boy. So, uh, since your time in Chicago, uh, Stephen, you were contacted by your sire. Okay. Um, I already told the players this, but just to reiterate for the audience, this is taking place in the winter of that year, so it's been about half a year since the Camarilla characters last came up. Well, you ended in the spring. If you had listened to what I was telling you... Now, I specifically went over this. I said, so we ended in the winter. It's no, I did the not. summer and the... No. I said, we ended in the spring. We are picking up winter. in the winter. You've reversed them. Not. That is not... Oh, I'm going to go back and listen to the recording. Okay, you can do that. I mean, look, aren't you both high right now? Yes. I am less high than he is. That doesn't oh, mean anything. Know, you're losing credibility now. Okay, which one of us do you think has the higher uh, resistance? <laughs> Definitely you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mary has taken one hit, and we don't know what she's thinking. I don't even feel the effects, honestly. Mm -hmm. So because it wasn't a full hit. It was the end of your. It was the end of your hit. There was hardly anything in there. Mary's just trying to lay a groundwork for when she takes another hit. I'm just saying, I no wrote more. down spring. You watched me write down spring. I asked you all sorts of questions about it, and you're like, yes, that's correct. And then you're Here, like, Mary. no, it's winter. I probably Mary, did you tell you whatever you said was correct, but that's because I, I stopped you listening to you. You weren't listening to me. I had explained I it correctly. you guys both need to relax and take another hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, I mean... There's David... The arbitrator. Right, so <laughs> He's bringing joy to our lives because he knows our arbitrator. He's starting joy. a conversation. <laughs> He's joy everywhere I go. Oh my goodness. Jesus. All right. 
So, uh, it's now winter, um, and the, uh, Stephen has been contacted by his sire, um, and told about a, uh, Tremere, uh, assault being planned in French Canada. Ooh. So... A Tremere assault against the Sabbat. Your, probably. yes, your coterie is, um, uh, going to volunteer for it. Ah. You've been informed. Okay. Um, it's currently being organized by the, uh, Tremere Judicar. Okay. And I have his name written down somewhere. Ah. Uh, Anastas ah. de Zagreb. Or Zagreb, or whatever. Folk strikes out. <laughs> I mean, if you want to pronounce it, go for it. I don't know. Show me the spelling. All right. He's going to come up with something Irish. <laughs> I doubt this Irish. Zagreb. There's too many consonants, aren't there? Oh, uh, yeah, Zagreb. All right, so why are you complete? You're like, oh, I'm like Zagreb, and then you're like, oh, Because you were like, or Zagreb, and I'm just, no, it's definitely not Zagreb. Come on. All right, well. <laughs> All right, whatever. So, we're going to go attack... So, Sabat in Montreal. All you right. are ordered to proceed to Quebec uh, with your coterie. So we're going from Chicago. Mary's looking at the map Montreal. of North America on the wall. Do we want to fly? Not to Montreal, to Quebec. Oh, to Quebec. Where's Quebec City. Right. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to go look at that. <laughs> um... So, uh, you are going to have to arrange your own transportation there, although you have been given the information you need in order to, like, contact the city prince. Uh, the prince is also the Tremere regent, because the prince is a Tremere. Um, and then you'll get further orders from there. You're given all, like, the contact information, you know, passwords, things like that you need. So we're going to be a slight bit north yeah, it's in the same uh, province as Montreal. We're not going to Ottawa, we're going to Quebec City. Alright. Right. So, uh, Stephen, you're informed of this. How you present this to your coterie is up to you. Um, you're also going to need to decide uh, how you want to get there um, and whether or not uh, Terry is going to come with you or remain in the city. And obviously what you're bringing with you. Mm-hmm. So you find uh, these two, uh, you know, as you usually do, playing Nintendo 64 and Is smoking Lucy weed. Is here as well? Uh, she's there, yeah. Okay. Is she going to come with us? Um, well, somebody's going to have to stay and feed the dog, so if Tara comes with us, she'd have to stay and Yeah, she could feed the definitely dogs. do that. Um, okay. So anyway, so you guys are in the uh, rumpus room... The four of them are having a uh, Smash Brothers meet, uh, not Melee, just Smash Brothers off. Okay. Actually, you know what? Uh, give me a uh, Dexterity plus Nintendo 64 rating from all of you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know Nintendo 64 was a skill. I think actually the ruling we had before was that each game was a skill because there is a more skill <laughs> that's true um all right so give me a smash brothers plus dexterity <laughs> four four all right shit i spent a blood point five okay <laughs> so now he's down to three all right All right, so Lucy is currently uh, winning. Bonus. <laughs> she is you're beating your ass. Her, you're letting her win, Ryan. Uh, Ryan is doing the next best. Uh, Terry is doing the worst currently. So what characters are you playing as? Who does Ryan main? Uh, shit, who was best in 64? 
I always liked Link, but I know he's not supposed to be the best. He's shit. shit. I'm a Captain Falcon type. <laughs> he's the other one I liked, yeah. I'm pretty sure Fox is the best in 64 and Melee, so... F I think Fox is supposed to be the best in all of them. No, he's actually really shit in the la later two. Oh. And who is Lucy playing as? She's beating you all with Kirby, isn't she? Uh, she would probably do Jigglypuff. Yeah. Right. And she's kicking your ass. Actually, Jigglypuff is... I don't know if she is in N64. I don't think so. But no, in she's Melee, she's, she's like the best. Oh. She's bottom 64. Yeah. So, um... Anyway, so Ryan is pretending that he is allowing Lucy to win out of love. Derek's just not doing well. Well, we never decided what <laughs> David's playing as yet, did we? I thought Fox. it said Fox. Fox, all right. I know, well, see, he's the best, but I, don't, I didn't know that was necessarily, you know, the one you're going for. Well, Ryan's nature is competitive, remember? That's true. Very annoyed right now. <laughs> Sometimes, David, you just fade into <laughs> nothing, like you... and then you come back. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Oh, it's because I'm leaning over to um, write something. Oh, okay. You, I was going to say, it does so sound like I'm leaning away from the microphone. Sorry. I'll, I'll try to stay right in front of the computer when I talk. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway so you come so in I and you find in, this. And I, and I can see that everybody's got the deep red uh, negative percentages down there, and they're about to be, like, thrown off the yeah. stage. And, um, and Lucy's character has a big zero percentage or something anyway. So I can kind of tell she's winning. Can I tell that? Do I have enough? Um, give me uh, your <laughs> perception plus Smash Brothers. That's three. Uh, yeah, you can figure out what's going on. Okay. All right, well, I'll... Um, I guess I'll wait and I don't want to disturb them while I know how competitive Ryan is. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to interrupt. So I'll wait until the round is over. Thanks. <laughs> He's sitting literally on the edge of his seat right now. Pale, because he spent all of his blood on yes. dexterity. <laughs> About to go into frenzy, because he really wants to beat Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. so I'll let that round finish. Yeah, uh, Lucy wins. For right. sake. Um, all right, so um, on that note, I have a little um, task for us all to complete. So do I have everybody's full attention? Uh, I might need to feed first. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we're going to be picking up, the main story is going to be when you guys land in Quebec, so whatever your blood is now, you'll just have it when you land there. So we can go. So we have okay. a time frame of when we need to get there, like, do we need to leave tonight? Um, you need to leave pretty soon. Okay. You have time to get ready, but... Okay. All right, so, um, here's the thing. We need to go to Quebec City because the Tremere are uh, planning an assault. Do I know what's on the Sabbat? Um, yeah. Okay. Upon the Sabbat there and my sire and hopefully those words strike as much fear into you both <laughs> as they do into me. Uh, my sire has requested that we uh, help in that assault. Oh. Huh. So, well, I guess we gotta do it. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, sure. So we need to, I guess, uh, if if time is of the essence, we should probably fly. What was my... Um, they are still in the preparation phases. So, so you do have time if you do want to drive up there, but you'll... So we'd take a couple of nights. Yeah. But we could bring more stuff. Yes. Also, it'd be more dangerous because you'd be, you know, traveling. We'd be out during the day in just the yeah. sunproofed car or whatever. And, and we would need Terry. And you point. would cross, obviously, rural territory as well. Which would be the Lupines. So, um, so how do you guys feel? 
do, would you rather fly or would you or have Terry drive us out? Huh. Uh, I'm trying to decide which is a more logistical nightmare. Like, flying sounds kind of dodgy as well, doesn't it? Um. Well, actually, we're not traveling time zones, are we? No, the actual flight Just, would like, be going... pretty easy. It would yeah, no, we'd have to... be maybe, like, be... an hour. Yeah, it'd be, like, two hours. All right, yeah, no, nah, just, yeah, just book a, fl book a flight in the middle of the, like, All in the right, dead of night. All right, but at that point, we're not going to be able to take any... We're not going to be able to smuggle anything across the border. I mean, we're going to go through TSA, and they're going to... Well, oh, I mean, and... why can't we... Well, why couldn't we get a flight and have and Terry have go Terry with my car with stuff stuff. Oh, that might be a good way. Well, here's the other thing, is even um, driving, you're still going to cross a border. Um, handguns. True, but they're not necessary. I mean, if we had smuggle, I mean, it's a little easier to smuggle in the yeah vehicle. They don't they don't do the TSA X ray you thing. They only really kind of. I mean, you know. They do search vehicles for firearms. What's the one? What's but they don't the search everything. Board like? All right. Right. I've watched your little Canada border crossing thing, and they don't search every vehicle. <laughs> You see, I'm used to living on a continent where people trust each other, so I have no idea what this is going to be like. Um, but I have a feeling in this game, the car is going to be searched, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, if you're trying to smuggle something do. across the border, it is illegal, and they do try and stop people from doing that. Right. So it's so not needs to just not... a free pass. Right. No, and I understand, but they generally have some sort of suspicion, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Because I have crossed a border several times and not been searched. Right. Um, so there is that so I mean we could we could give that a try and I think we can take firearms on the plane as long as they're in the luggage and we have well uh, you have to consider what firearms are legal in Canada so your handgun David's Desert Eagle is not but like my Webley um, that's also a handgun. It is so illegal. So no handguns at all? No. They are, uh, prohibited unless you have a special Canadian license, and you guys obviously can't, you teams? can't get that. Um, I, I think it probably does count as a concealed weapon. I don't think they'd let you take it. So we can have no concealed weapons. Pretty much. But we could bring, like, assault rifles, which we couldn't conceal. That would be fine. No, uh, assault rifle-style weapons are also illegal. I see. Pretty so much shotguns so are about all you can get away any with. any of our weapons. Yeah, um, anything you, well, you bring would have to be kind of justifiable as, like, a hunting sort of weapon. So nothing that we have. So shotguns, you could also procure it if you wanted to, but um, shotguns, I think hunting rifles. So we could bring the shotgun is what you're saying. A shotgun, yes. Okay. So maybe we Not a sawn-off. No, but I have my one that I have over the fireplace. But yeah, you could take that one. Okay. All right, and then pretty much everything in my satchel they're going to think is odd, but shouldn't raise any flags i will i won't have the fake ids but the lighter the flashlight the wooden stake the clay the bag of ash the bag of sawdust my uh the stake they might question you about although um you could just make another stake when you get there that's not a problem at all it's just wood i won't take the taser or would they allow a taser um i don't think so no okay. it's non-lethal can i put it in my luggage i think it still counts as a concealed weapon You could get a lighter. Start a fire. <laughs> Look, it's not my fault that Canada is a police state. Good lord. Good lord. All right. Well, I'm gonna do some duct tape in my satchel then. Anyway, so we should probably all pack, and I will make the uh, arrangements for the flight. All right, so you guys are flying and out. If anybody's hungry, we should probably stop by the uh, purgatory. 
like I said, what you're gonna be landing with whatever blood you rolled for. This is oh, like a prologue. Where we're starting. Okay. Because so it's gonna take um, you days to get ready. Okay. So wait, we're not uh, bringing weapons then? No, we can't. We're gonna be stopped at the airport. There's no way we're gonna get through the airport with weapons. <clears throat> Well, what if you organized something with the Tremere? Uh, is there anyone in the Chantry with, for example, that mirror transportation weapons? Um, I think we're on our own to get there. Once we're there, we can ask the Tremere to help us procure things. Yeah, but you're being asked by your sire, right? So could you not reply uh, to your sire, hey, could you help okay. us smuggle weapons? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, <laughs> that's metagame. And I realize that within the game, I did say that my sire requested, but my sire told me what to do. Okay. She's yeah. not going to help us. Okay. So no, Stephen can't go and call her sir and say, hey, help us smuggle some weapons. She's going to be like, no. Deal with it yourself. All right, then. So, um... How am I going to smuggle my stuff? I can't even smuggle my stuff. Well, you could... A staff you could probably bring through. It's not concealable, and I don't think it can really be called a deadly you weapon. Just call it, you wouldn't deprive an old man of his walking stick, says this 15-year-old boy. <laughs> leaning heavily. Uh, I guess if I put it in, in fact, the non-carry luggage bag. Yeah, it would be really inconvenient, but yeah, you could just put it there. I mean, worst case scenario, you could get another long stick. <laughs> I actually... And actually, when I arrive there, I'm gonna have to... to break off... <laughs> So the question is, do we fly and then have Terry drive with some other supplies maybe that we couldn't check with us on to, although I don't want him to have to have him smuggle any guns. Mm -hmm. But if he could carry some other supplies um, in the trunk of the car. Yeah, you could do that. Or bring the, you know, one of the Hummers, one of the armored vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, just drive that over, stripped of whatever. Can you take ammunition across without the gun? Um, I don't know, but I'm thinking probably not. Okay. But he could bring, like, the jewelry making equipment that he uses to build ammo, and maybe some silver or. I mean, it's not jewelry making equipment. It's well, it's, it's ammo but <laughs> making his, equipment. But he could bring his equipment. Yeah. Right? Um, I think you could probably. I don't know if you could take that or not. Um. And what about knives? They're concealed weapons, so no? Um, I think it, like a pocket knife or something, I think should be fine. Um, like a bayonet. No. Oh, that was another thing I needed to put in there. Okay. Was that I wanted a Swiss Army knife? Stallworth is just sitting there like, I got claws. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It is true. Yeah, you're fine. Alrighty. You are good to go. Um, all right. But he could bring... Because I'm not going to get my <clears throat> trilby through the airport. No. I know that. But. Probably in a, with the vehicle. Um, um, um. So you guys finished? You ready to fly? Yeah, fuck it. So All yeah, right. let's fly, and we'll have Terry drive out in uh, a Hummer with anything non-lethal, non, you know, anything that he thinks. All right. With the medical kits and the repair kits and the whatever he can get in there that he thinks he can get across the border. Fire extinguishers. All right, it's going to be a while before right. he gets there because you're flying out and then right. he's driving. Right, no, I, so. I know it's going to take him a couple okay. of days. I get that. But at least then we have I mean, the well, we can send, send him ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like a lot of those things, you could you can buy things in Canada, like a, a medical kit. Well, okay, I, you know, I mean, he <laughs> or a fire we extinguisher. Could. I mean, he can bring them. What I really want is just the Hummer there, so that we have okay. some sort of vehicle. All right. Yeah. 
Not that I don't trust the terrain. Air, I mean, you can rent a car while you're in. Not an armored vehicle with solid tires and a rear <laughs> thing. Oh, no, I, I, I forgot. I, I forgot rent. you're a paranoid. Freak. Exactly. <laughs> so don't be telling me, oh, you can just rent one. No, I can't rent my. Well, you were making it sound though. like you just wanted a vehicle. You didn't <laughs> specifically mention. No, I meant I want a vehicle that I have prepared for myself because if a you notice right vehicle. after that, I All said right. not that I don't trust the Tremere, but. I'd like to have one of my own vehicles. All right. I don't see why you don't trust the. I don't see why you trust the Tremere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys get a red eye flight uh, out to Quebec City. All right. So, uh, you guys land and are given uh, the information to a um, kind of inconspicuous building. You're able to get a taxi pretty easily out of the airport um, and take you to a neighborhood in sort of the older part of the city um, near the, uh, like, the old fortifications. And there is a unassuming little building, uh, which looks like it's sort of an old, sort of townhouse style uh, residence. And this is where uh, the address you have been given has led you. Was there a, a password or a secret handshake or something that I was supposed um, to know? There were a series of passwords um, that you have. Okay. So, all right. So I wait for the taxi to drive off. Okay. And then I walk up to the door. I don't have any special instructions about how I'm no. supposed to enter. All right, so I will knock. Are the other two coming with you? I don't know. Are they standing in the street looking scared? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then Steve will walk up to the door alone and give it a firm knock. Actually, uh, it's good that you mentioned that because, Ryan, you have started to feel definitely uncomfortable. Because you're out in the open. Well, and he's, he's in a, a strange he's place. in a, yeah, he's not even a different country. Oh, good lord, they don't even speak English here! Actually, they do. Steven, I'm scared. So, um, uh, Derek, calm him down. You want me to calm him down? Because <laughs> I'm kind of scared, too. <laughs> Derek, just, just stick by me, yeah? Just put a comforting hand on his shoulder. You've seen Steven do it a million times. All right. I got you, man. <laughs> All right. Thanks, pal. <laughs> All right. So Jesus. I give a firm... It's nice. It's nice getting along with Star Wars character. <laughs> yeah. Or getting along with anyone, really. Because Derek's a high humanity character, unlike Joseph. <laughs> oh no, yeah. No. Derek's high humanity, but Ryan sure as hell isn't. No, he isn't. It's no, he's like not swapped. actually. All right. Well, I'm working on it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So. Stephen walks up to the door and All right. gives it a knock. So after a little bit, uh, the door uh, or a like a little so slide little opens. Yeah. Eyes, oh, look at me. Yep. Oh, I give the password. Okay. When you give the passwords, the door opens, and a uh, genteel-looking man in pretty out-of-date attire. He looks like it's from the 1800s. dressed about a hundred years ago. Yeah. He leads. You inside, um, and he says, <laughs> name and rank. So where do these elder vampires, do they have their clothes custom made? Because it's not like you can go... This guy doesn't look like an elder vampire to you. Oh. He looks like a servant. Yeah, no. And still. Okay. Um, uh, so name and rank, is that what... Yep. Okay, so um, Dr. Stephen Higgins, Tremere, sixth, novice of the sixth or I'm going to wait for you to look it up and say it right. Yeah, novice of sixth circle. <laughs> novice of the Sith, of the sixth circle of mysteries. Of mysteries, sorry. I did not have the of mysteries. Okay, okay. I say the of mysteries. All right. I'm, I know Stephen would have it correct. <laughs> All right. So he checks a list and then says, I was told to expect two more with you. Um... 
yes, my young companion has difficulties dealing with uh, new circumstances. They are behind me on the street. And I will go out and I will gesture Derek to bring Ryan inside. And I'll bring him inside. All right. By the scruff of the neck. So Watch once you... <laughs> So once you guys are inside, uh, he closes the door behind you and locks it. And then you guys also see him make a hand gesture over the door, and then he leads you guys further inside. Now that there's no way out. Yep, door's warded. So, uh, you are taken into uh, an office um, where there are a couple of people, uh, well, several people present. Um, although a number of them are just kind of going back and forth. Two of them look like they're actually sitting there to stay. So, based on the description you were given, you recognize the woman as Annabelle, the prince of the city and also the regent of the city chantry. Um, and then you also see uh, Anastas de uh, Zagreb. who is the Judicar of your clan. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, I will bow in respect. All right. I'll present myself, if, since this is the prince. Yeah. Dr. Stephen Higgins of Chicago, reporting as requested. And the other two? I'll nudge them. Well, Ryan will look at Derek first, probably. Uh, I will give uh, the same pleasant treat. <laughs> are, are you going to bow to her now? or <laughs> Is that what we're supposed to do? She's Prince. Oh, okay, yes, yes. Alright. <laughs> Didn't preface it with the I'm a bow to you now, but alright. Alright, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so uh, <clears throat> Ryan will work up the courage to uh, get down on one knee and introduce himself as well. All right. So, once you guys have uh, presented yourselves, um, she says, she looks through some files and says, yes, very good. Um, she pulls a folder out of a desk, slides it over to Steven. And says, this contains uh, your uh, contact information uh, to receive orders once you are ready, um, as well as a dossier on the city. One special condition is that because many uh, more kindred are entering the city than uh, the mortal population can support, uh, especially without tipping our hand to the Sabbat, uh, you may not feed while you are here except in certain designated locations. Their addresses are contained Let's within the, the dossier. Okay. Uh, any feeding outside of those specific locations is strictly forbidden and will be punished. Understood, my lady. Alright. So with that, she just kind of gives you a perfunctory nod and that's it. She seems to be busy doing this with a lot of other okay, people. Okay, I'm going to take it that we find our own haven and we entertain ourselves until needed. So um, I'm looking through really quick. Does it say that I'm going to be contacted or that I contact You will someone? contact them once you are prepared. Once we are prepared for... for once you've, you're in the city, once you've established your haven, once you've... Oh, okay, once we're settled. We find out what we need to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Got You're it. still in the planning stages of the invasion right now, so everyone is just kind of but reporting there may be in. something that I, you know, like, go yeah. find this for us, because yeah. we'll need this before we go. Okay. But first, we take care of getting a haven. You're expected to gotcha. uh, provision yourselves. Gotcha. That's what I was thinking. Okay. All right. So I will uh, stand up, nod. I don't know if I was offered a seat. Maybe I'm still standing. Like, Yay. Nod. Um, <laughs> and... Um, Thank you very much. Turn on my heel and walk out, and hopefully my two companions follow me. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, tap mine on the shoulder and like motion my head after you as we leave. Don't All right, I'll follow along. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So you guys managed to get out of the chantry intact. Okay. This is so, a good system we have. All right. So as we're standing on the uh, on the sidewalk in front of the chantry, that was the chantry. All right. Um. Okay. All right. Well, apparently we're on our own, fellas. <laughs> so. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I suggest we try and figure out, well, I'm going to look, I'm going to open the file. Mm -hmm. Is there like a map with red areas circled on it where we can feed possibly well, Haven? Possibly. You have the addresses where you're allowed oh, to okay. feed. <laughs> like map. Of There's no, uh, there is a map of the city. Um, I was going to say, is there a map of the city? You also the have a cell phone. <laughs> okay, that's true. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you can, I, she assumes you will just GPS All right. the addresses. So, since Ryan is looking a little pale, I'll have noticed. He hasn't said anything yet, but yeah, I'll have noticed. Yeah, paler than normal. That, um, That's pretty bad. So I'll, I'll just casually ask if anyone is, uh, is hungry. <laughs> Ryan's fangs are growing and he's yeah. fighting off the beast. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, a bit, I'm a bit famished. <laughs> so, so. Um, all right, well, then we should probably go feed and maybe get a look around the city and try and find a haven for ourselves. All right. Question. All right. Yes. Yes, Derek, yes. What is your question? Uh, would it be possible to give uh, Ryan a little blood so that when he actually goes out to feed, he won't go into frenzy or have the possibility of going into frenzy? Yeah, if Ryan agrees to that. Uh, uh, I am fully blood bonded to say, Lisa now, right? And I have, I do have blood pills. Yeah. Uh, wasn't was there a thing about getting addicted to vampire vitae? I think you explained me this before. Um, Asamites, If you commit diablery, then yes, uh, Asamites get it because of their clan weakness. Okay, then. Uh, as long as I mean, you're not, sure. as long as you're not constantly indulging, you, it's unlikely you're getting addicted. Derek, what's your blood at? Oh, I'm at eight. Well, you really I'll can't. have a little nibble. I was going to say, I, I, I do have ten blood pills, and then you don't have to take any from... Well, or right, if you don't mind using them now, sure. I mean, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch. You're going to go feed. I just don't want you to frenzy out on somebody. All right, I'll have, like, two then, yeah? Okay, yeah. So I'll pop you a couple, and then I have eight left, and that's fine. Steven was just jealous when he saw Ryan about to suck on Derek, and he's like, hmm. <laughs> it's my... It's my lover, not yours, Derek. My boy toy. Exactly. <laughs> he's jealous of both of them. <laughs> no, I wanted to be in that. Derek just likes to help. I know, he's such a good guy. I will offer a couple of pills to Derek, too, if he wants them. You are about you are. to embark on uh, Siege Avenger, I'm just saying, is... As you're spreading oh, out right, your all blood right, points. Alright, alright, alright. Yeah, I'm, I'm just fine hunting okay. and finding these people. Alright. Alright, so you guys are heading to one of the feeding stations. You can find the one nearest you, no problem, okay. with your cell phones. And we're walking, or do we need to take a taxi? Um, you could probably... We uh, don't have luggage with us. You're nearby enough that you could walk. Um, you do have luggage with you, yes. It's up to you if you want to, um, unless, of course, you wanted to, um, probably they'd have some place we, at was... the hotels where you could rent a car as well. Do we want to stay in a hotel? I mean, that would be the easiest way to get a haven. That would be. Uh, I mean, like, it's a start, and then we can look for something better. Because let's just go to sort of an out-of-the-way motel. We're not going to do, like, five-star, you know, Hilton downtown. Hilton's have security. We also might... Would we be noticed? You can be noticed anywhere. I think any sort of nice hotel would be more likely to notice things like us uh, blocking the windows and whatnot. That there's whatnot. a big, like, blackout, whatever, in the middle. I mean... Yeah. Could be. Well, I don't know. Like, if you're talking about a roadside motel, like, the windows for those usually look out directly onto the parking lot. So having a big plastic sheet over it... <laughs> Is gonna be well, I was obvious. just going to do Defense of the Sacred Haven. Ah, that's your plan. So that there wasn't any, like, duct tape 
yeah. on the windows. Well, you could so do that anywhere, then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I mean, we could go to, you know, the cemetery and find a mausoleum and whatever. I mean... You could do that as well. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want... Do we want to just stay in a hotel, or do we want to try and find... Well, maybe something more inhuman is safer. Um, I'd vouch. I'd vouch for something like a fucking cemetery then. The mausoleum and do whatever. But then we got the Nosferatu. Are we going to be walking on Nosferatu territory? Because you know they don't. And we do have ghouls. Do we want some sort of security? We don't want people breaking in in the middle of the day either. I suppose, yeah, we're going to have to send Terry somewhere to stay anyway, so we might as well get a hotel, I guess. All right, whatever. Let's just get a hotel together, then. All right, so we'll get a hotel. All right. We'll go middle of the road. Okay. Not too dumpy, not too flashy. Okay. We're going to be very nondescript. So All right. we'll point here, be nondescript. But yet, maybe enough foot traffic that, like, people breaking in would be noticed. All right. Okay. So we'll do that, and we'll drop off our luggage. Then we'll go feed. Okay. Are you going to be renting a car? Maybe for a couple of days till Terry gets there. All right. Okay. So, guys, rent a car. And then... Uh, you hop in, you're getting ready to go I'm to the feeding driving. station. I think I'm the only one that can drive. Uh, Ryan Lord did drive, didn't he? <laughs> you're saying because he drove that tanker, suddenly no, he, he knows how to drive. They... Oh yeah, Ryan does know how to drive. Ryan took a point and drive. You taught him to drive. Well, Terry did. After I saw that horror on the news. Alright. So you jump in, and actually... As you jump... But Ryan's about to frenzy and freaked out because he's in a new place. I don't want him driving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you guys jump in, um, and you head out, and then as you're on, it looks like um, the radio seems to be broken because... <laughs> All it's playing is, I'm on a Mexican radio. It just keeps playing this song, Mexican Radio, which, uh, Stephen, you recognize as being by Wall of Voodoo. It was very popular for a small, small space of time. <laughs> and you haven't heard it in decades. Mm -hmm. So. I would like to uh, see if there's a pattern in this with uh, dementation. All right. What was my role for that again? Um, I think it is... I don't know. Let me look it up. Dementation 3. It is Perception plus Occult. Six. All right. Higher than it has a right to be. All right. Ryan oh, some oh. occult. I guess he does it with you. Yeah. All right. Um, what would Steven do? So you do analyze it. Um, you're not sure right now. It is possible, but you'll have to see if the song reappears at any point. Right now, you kind of you're you only have one data point so far, but you have definitely got it into your mind. Um, and speaking right. of which, uh, once you are, have been focusing on for that time, you find it extremely catchy and you just keep like humming I it to yourself that Ryan from any was point over there thereon. just to be away. I'm on a Mexican radio. I'm on a Mexican, whoa, radio. So yeah. All right. Anyway. Can we get to the uh, feeding grounds? Yes, you eventually reach it, and it is a um, kind of the one you find is a uh, sort of disused-looking warehouse, basically. Okay, because 
So I'm going to assume the homeless are our prey. Alrighty, boys. So let's. I will park. Okay. All right. So you guys jump out. And uh, yeah, let's have a look around. Yeah. Let's have a look see. All right. So as you approach, you can see that there is someone kind of on guard in front of the building. And uh, as you approach, uh, he asks you to identify yourselves. Um, I'm Dr. Stephen Higgins. Uh, we're just here to, um, take a look around. Alright. So, uh, he checks a list and then nods you through. Okay. So, on the inside, you can see that there are just rows upon rows. It looks kind of like a hospital ward. Um, there are just tons of beds, uh, with various people, uh, chained to them. Um, just... In long I'm stretches. A little uncomfortable with this. Up to the end. And um, looking at the makeup, it seems to be not necessarily the racial makeup of the area. It looks like um, they mostly must have come from sort of third world nations, it looks like. Um, it doesn't take much to guess that there may be some human trafficking involved. That's what it seems like to you. Um, so as you are inside, uh, a ghoul approaches you. And, uh, says you're here to feed? Um, I shall abstain, but I believe my companions may wish to. Is this the sort of thing you feel guilty about when you do it? What's your humanity? Is this the sort of thing a high humanity character would feel? Uh, yep. They do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Stephen is extremely uncomfortable. I will observe this and say, hmm, I better not do it either. <laughs> this is the only source of blood I was in this say, city. We can only feed in certain areas. So I will um I will ask the ghoul, are the other feeding areas the same as this? Uh yes. Uh the elders have made arrangements uh to bring in sustenance since the city cannot uh support the Camarilla. It is uh to uphold the masquerade. Yeah, okay. It's a disgust showing on David on on on, on Stephen's face, but, but he attempts to because obviously this is it's not going to complain openly, that's all I'm saying. He says uh, each of you are rationed to only uh, a slight amount of blood uh, per night in order to uh, make sure that everyone all of our Vessels remain alive. How much is slight? Um, in game terms, uh, two blood points. Okay. Okay. Derek's fine. That'll fill him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ryan's like, crap, how could I... I I spend so much blood. I mean, I spent a point just playing melee with, uh, with, with Lucy. <laughs> Damn. Hmm. Hmm, that decision to spend oh. blood on Smash Brothers comes back. Uh, how long are we gonna be here? Um, uh, probably for one. the duration of the invasion, so, uh, weeks to months. So, and you're gonna lose a point every day. So, I mean, you're really only gaining, like, one point per day here. What's Stephen gonna do for blood? Um, well, fortunately, I'm pretty full right now, and I still have eight blood pills, which are no longer going to <laughs> either of you, I can tell you right now. And I suppose you have Terry. And I do have Terry. What's Derek gonna do to partake in this? Yeah, looks like you guys are. Yep. He seemed pretty okay with it pretty early on. <laughs> God damn it, Star Wars. Well, they made sure that the people weren't gonna be killed. Yeah. No, they're just yeah. chained to beds and fed upon by vampires. And these people are conscious, right? Uh, some of them are. Uh, the ones that are the ghoul points you out to a row that can actually be used for feeding. 
The other ones have IG, IV drips, and he says you can't feed on them because they're recovering, and currently their system is filled with barbiturates in order to keep them... Um, from freaking out that they're yeah. being fed on by vampires. So uh, what happens... So I'm just uh, making conversation while uh, Derek and Ryan are picking out a selectable thing. So um, what will be done with these people when they're um, uh, at the end of the assault? He says, I don't know. Presumably they don't. will uh, either be dominated or removed i see and it seems unlikely to you that an elder is they're actually going to go around to each one of these people, people and <laughs> dominate no, that's them that's not going to happen so they're going to be okay. they look very expendable to you hmm yes no very very uncomfortable yeah no i regret those two pills going to me well, I tried to <laughs> but at least, warn you. you know, he's not going to go into frenzy here because that would probably be a bad thing if he yeah. like, freaked out in frenzy. So that's how I'm going to, I'm going to like it. Okay, we did keep him from going into frenzy. I will keep an eye on him because I don't know if he's actually past frenziable mm -hmm. whatever. So I am there to smack him if he yeah. looks like he's going to take more than his two. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I just won't do it. Well, All right. But you need some blood. How else are you going to get blood? Uh, are we forbidden from getting blood yes. out of the other way? Because yes. there are so many We're vampires in the city, all. it will be a threat to the masquerade, which the Camarilla... Now, here is what I would suggest. That you take your two blood tonight, because you really don't have any other choice. And you need to get up to where you're not hungry um, okay. um possibly okay, this possibly once terry gets here with the car maybe we could go more outside of the city try and find some livestock we are going to be running the risk of lupines but you know we might have some other options later but i would suggest that for now you just do what you gotta do you could you could take the blood now, and you know in the future not go in a frenzy, or you could not take the blood and have that possibility of frenzy on you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's already... almost it's almost like a beast I am, lest a beast I become. Yeah. So there's some kind of thing. And <laughs> first so edition. It's like stuff. you know, although Stephen's uncomfortable, he, he's not gonna judge you for taking the points right now. All right. Because I see All right. Two blood points. You no, got no, no, no choice. All right. Conscience roll. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is your guys's humanity currently? <laughs> Four. You're good. Yeah. These are the sway you. All right. All right. Let's <laughs> roll for. What uh, is your conscience? For Stalworth. Uh, Derek will uh, look for whoever looks to be the most terrified. Okay. And uh, go over, you know, sit on their bedside, you know, put a hand on their head, try to just try to comfort them, them. Mm -hmm. try to calm them down a little bit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then steal it's their blood. And then just whip <laughs> into their neck. <laughs> As he's talking, the fangs grow, the beast comes out. <laughs> uh, yes, try to gently take those two blood points. Is it a woman? Can you just start to nuzzle her neck like you're going to make out? She's probably afraid you're going to rape her, but... Yeah, when you're chained to the bed yeah, inside of the prison true. complex. That's true. <laughs> Women are yeah. usually interested in sex. Yeah, that's and that. true. I was I, I... thinking it was Jan. He could seduce anybody. Well, Jan, oh, yeah. yeah. Jan was a different breed. <laughs> <laughs> but can I can I throw that manipulation for seduction in there? No. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll try manipulation to plus empathy to see if he can calm them down. Um, you could try a charisma plus empathy if you wanted. I'll, I'll try it. All right. And that roll is seven. Okay. All right. So you start trying to uh, calm this person down. Um, they don't seem to speak English. 
Um, uh, but you're not seeming to make a lot of headway. It's possible that the circumstances kind of negate any. Yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I, I, Stephen. Well, he does need to kind of keep an eye on Ryan, but he will kind of turn away from Derek and just really focus on Ryan, not going into frenzy. But he really doesn't want to watch any of this. Let's protect the masquerade. You know. You know, I was in World War II. I understand that sometimes. See, they have all this blood there done. because otherwise uh, it's easily available. Otherwise, you could go into frenzy and then you're just like the Sabbat. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is very blood feasty, if you ask me. <laughs> no, it's not because no one's having fun here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is very clinical. Mm hmm. This is all. I am noting that my superiors are inhuman. All right, so uh, Gary will never be run this way. Derek, conscience. Uh, one second. <laughs> yep, that is our uh, three. All right. Please feel bad. <laughs> you do feel really bad about this, yes. <laughs> Yes. You're almost, no you're degeneration. crying as you suck this person's blood. I'm, I'm still a person. <laughs> Unlike, uh, Unlike, someone <laughs> Unlike someone else. Unlike someone else who is uh, barely human. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So you guys, uh, Ryan, you don't feel too much at all as you're feeding from this person. It's just, you know, another source of blood. Sure. You know, you might have your intellectual objections to it. But, like, on an actual emotional level, it really doesn't do anything for you. I know it's wrong, but I just can't stop. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but it feels so good. All right. It's like when you know on, the, on an intellectual basis that you should go vegan. Yeah. But you, but you just have burgers anyway. Yeah. Because yeah. they taste good. Anyway. All righty. So you guys each get two blood points. And uh, that is your guys' ration for, for the day. I was gonna say I can't give Ryan my ration. Um, you can if you wish to. No, I don't really want to wish to. I don't. I don't want to inflict it on anybody else. Sorry, Ryan. I don't wow. think I can come up with that though. I I really wow. have a pro I really have a problem with this whole people chained to the bed being fed on thing. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> does Ryan does Ryan ask? I mean, like I said, Ryan, uh, nah, I better not have any more. <laughs> he intellectually I realizes. Know, I know on an intellectual basis that I shouldn't be there. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So. Um, yeah, you guys have done that. You get back into uh, the haven you guys have established, and you... Spend the day there, so everyone loses a blood point. I was gonna say, I put up, like, cans or something in front of the door. I do Defense of the Sacred Haven, and, and um... Alright. Like, just... You know, whatever. We take some precautions, is all I'm saying. Alright. We've had another day. Yep, so you guys wake up in your hotel room. And we'll take off the blood point. What kind of... <laughs> how many... Did you all just get one room? Uh, is there a room with four beds? I was gonna say, can, we get, <laughs> can, can I get a suite? You, um, you could get a room that has, like, uh, multiple beds and, like, a couch or something. Or, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, if I can get a suite, um, then that would sleep, like, four people. Alright. I don't want necessarily the double queen, because that, like, implies... Well, and I you're not going to a really nice I know, I realize that there's either. not four separate beds, but yeah. at least there's, like, some separate rooms kind of a thing. Um, so who wants to, uh, take the couch? Well, I'm taking the master... I'm taking the king bed in the bedroom. Because I'm stealing. I'll I'm take the couch. Alright. Derek the hero. And then I'm assuming Ryan will sleep on the floor because he probably doesn't want to sleep next to Derek or Steven. I mean, you know. Steven whatever. will pat the uh, 
bed beside him if you. I mean. Uh, all right. Well, that'll definitely turn me off. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Bed to myself. All right. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to have sex. You just, you know, can share the bed. Nah. It's nah. Just, this is just a couple of boys. Uh, I know nah. that Ryan is uh, homophobic. He's not yeah, a real. Yeah, I just, I just, I just hate the gays. You know. <laughs> All right. So, you guys wake up. Nothing amiss. You guys missed the continental breakfast. Yeah. Well. Oh. I assumed. It's about when we didn't we get some before <laughs> you, we nah, got on our way. The sun was already up. In? Okay. Well, it's it's winter though. Uh, that's true, we're actually. Yeah, you could have grabbed the continental breakfast Wait, if you wanted to. I was going to say. Not that we would... Be <laughs> I mean, Stephen could. I, I was going to say, Stephen made, you know, made, acted like he was human. Took a little nibble of the, took some eggs and toast. All right. So, what are you guys going to do now? You've moved in, unpacked your shotgun. Okay, so we got the shotgun, we've got the, um, so I'll call Terry, see where he is, has he crossed the border? Um, let's see. No, he hasn't. Well, I was gonna say, is he, is he driving through the states enough? Yeah, he's he gonna going, he, yeah, Michigan? he's gonna wait, um, no, and he's not, through Canada. yeah, he's gonna go through the states first. Okay, so where is he at? Um, he's in New England right now. So he's Pennsylvania, New York, getting on up there? Yeah. Okay. So he's got maybe another day? Um, probably longer than that. Day and a half? Two days? Two, three days. Oh, it's not going to take him two, three days to get from Pennsylvania to um, Quebec City, which is right up there. I mean, well, there's... It'll take him two days. Not I'm if he was going days. straight, but I mean, there's also the possibility of traffic, and it's going to take a long time to get over the border because it's a bottleneck. Maybe he's enjoying himself. Maybe he's road tripping. <laughs> Maybe he's like, oh god, I'm finally free. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't want that old man with me all the time anymore. Been smoking some pot and just <laughs> me a time. <laughs> it's like, he's like, yeah, I'm almost there. He's down in like Kentucky like, he heading towards he Miami. He even left. He's <laughs> sitting in the room playing Smash Brothers with Lucy, smoking pot, going, yeah, yeah, mom, I'm almost to the border. <laughs> She's over there sniggering. <laughs> All right. So, what now? All right, we should probably make our contact with this person. Okay. So how we can be of use. A man's voice uh, answers the phone call when you call him up, and when you identify yourself, he says you are to report uh, to Battlefields Park. Okay. that address in my um you can find it yeah okay it's a landmark all right um okay do i need to bring anything with me do i need to you should come prepared so, is there prepared prepared for what <laughs> prepared and um, then the phone call hangs up okay so uh um hmm Is there a feeding ground on the way to uh, yeah. the thing? Because Ryan should probably eat again. And then I guess we'll bring the gun. All right. The one weapon yeah. that we have. <laughs> Get like a duffel bag and put it in there. Yeah. All right. Because it's pretty unwieldy, actually. It is, probably. I was just going to stick it in the trunk of the car. Yeah, you could do that. Um... Yeah. God, is there anything else I can... I bring my satchel with, like, the few things I have. Zip ties. And then Ryan, and you've really uncomfortable. recovered your quarterstaff. You've got your quarterstaff. All right, good. Well, I guess Derek can grow claws. I'm just trying to think, do I have any, I guess, movement of the mind is about all I got. I really got to get some lure of flames. This is, you know, I gotta, I gotta be able to throw some fireballs. Damn it. Yeah. This is where Steven begins to, uh... <laughs> all right. So are you guys gonna stop off at a feeding station? Um, I think it would be wise. 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> Derek's fine. <with> it. <laughs> yeah. He passed the last conscience roll. He's confident in a second. Like, you know what? I felt pretty bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident I will continue to feel bad. So, anyway, so, uh, Ryan, I believe you should probably, since we are supposed to come prepared, I believe you should feed again. Assuming David is here. I don't think he is. I think he's gone. I think he left us. Which may be my cue to run and... Yeah, run. I'm here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, he had to mute Yeah, us. I guess I better. All right. Okay. So you guys stop off at our feeding station. It's a different one, but it's exactly the same setup as the other one. I may stand outside on this. So, uh... Derek, give me another conscience roll. That'll be three. All right. Still feel bad. <laughs> Although the difficulty was higher for this one. <laughs> <laughs> because you seem to be becoming quite immune. <laughs> and, uh... So, yeah. Uh, and you and Ryan are both able to get another two blood points. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh boy, I mean, oh, this was wrong, I guess. I mean, I understand that it was wrong. <laughs> I just I don't mean, care. When I, when, I mean, look, I understand it's wrong when I eat a burger, but I'm still like, oh boy, a burger. <laughs> <laughs> You're still like, uh, now I can uh, just waste all this blood with, like, thousands yeah, of points of celerity. So I can put get up my strength up to ten to kill a human with a steak. <laughs> It's <laughs> <laughs> something you did, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. And he's proud of it. I am what I am. I did what I did. Yeah. Jean should defect to the Camarilla and Ryan should I defect know, to the Sabbat. Uh, is that what's going to happen here? Is Ryan going to go with the Sabbat and become part of the Seven Samurai? And Jean is going to, like, become part Ryan, of the Ryan, this time around, Ryan is going to kill Jean. And then this Ryan... <laughs> <laughs> we'll join the Seventh Samurai. Wow. That'd be quite a twist of fate. I would like to see a battle between uh, between Derek and uh, this uh, Joseph person. Yeah, and that, that guy who's barely human. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, you guys head out to the park, which is... Uh, it's a city park. It's... Uh, so a little ways outside of, like, the main drag, so it is a lot quieter there. Um, and as you guys arrive and are looking around, uh, a man approaches you. And as he does so, yeah. uh, he introduces himself as Valois Sang. Valois Sang. Uh, novice of the Seventh Circle of Mysteries. One above me. That does mean he's your superior. Mm hmm Okay. All right. So, um, Dr. Stephen Higgins reporting as requested. All right. Uh, I don't suppose you've been told why you're here. Uh, no. All right. Great. So, he says, um, uh, you're here to provide backup. I am going to be meeting with uh, some possible allies, and you're here because I have requested um, support to make sure nothing, uh, they don't try anything. Not to pry, but would these allies possibly be gangrel? Uh, no. Okay. Do you have some sort of... conflict with the gangrel that I should be aware of? No, I was just we were meeting in a park. I was just wondering we may have some clout with the gangrel, was all I was thinking. Mm. No, uh, I have secured permission from these allies to have friends here uh, watching the area but you should try and remain out of sight in positions where you could 
uh, come in to support us only if necessary. All right. So where exactly will you be meeting so we can get a idea yeah. of... Yeah, so he, um, he didn't really have a designated meeting spot if you want to survey the area and tactically kind of decide what sort of features you would like to be around. All right. I'm going to give Ryan a task so that he can feel more comfortable. So, Ryan, where would the best spot be? Boss? Yeah, do like an investigation, a security thing, whatever. And uh, so Stephen is, is kind of giving you a task because he knows that you're freaked out because you're in a new place. So he wants you to focus on something. So he wants you to scope out this park area, see where the best spot to meet is, where the most defendable area is, because we, in case we need to provide backup for this meeting. So will I try a roll? Yeah, uh, give me a perception plus security. Actually, wits plus security. Oh, why wits? So I wanted to be wits. All right, six. You're not really looking for details. You're more like thinking about different routes that things could, people could use to attack you. All right, fair enough. So, um, since you guys are mostly melee, probably the best idea would be if you were fighting in like an enclosed space. So there are some buildings in the park. Probably one of them would be the best. Okay. Even your one ranged guy has a shotgun, so it's not that ranged. It's not going to be that ranged. So, um, okay. So we'll select one of the buildings. All right. And then... Uh, where should we be? I'm assuming we should be out of sight, yet close at hand. Is that yes. the idea? Obviously, Ryan can obfuscate. Yeah, so he could stay right up um, there. And then, are there is there more than one room in these buildings? or? Um, he will meet kind of... What he'll do is he will stay like on the front of the building, mm -hmm. and then you guys can be inside. Okay, just inside the door or something. Yeah. Okay. And then if there is problems, he will retreat backwards. Okay. Sounds like a good idea. Okay. Got the shotgun. All right. So you guys bunker down and wait. And after a little while, uh, you see a group of people approaching you. Um, I'm and then you. Fixing. Yeah, you can just kind of watch them. Um, give me a perception plus empathy. Um, five. Their auras seem incredibly vibrant to you. Kind of like the werewolves. Um, and kind of from what you can see, it looks like they're sort oh, of, um, Middle Eastern or maybe like something like that. Hmm. Is one missing an arm? Because <laughs> I'm assuming he can't grow it back because it was vicissitude at all. That's true. Uh... <laughs> You do see that, yes, one of them is missing an arm. <laughs> Why would they be vibrant? Are they on drugs or something? Well, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know if they're vibrant. Only but, Steven um, knows. Steven, I'm seeing that their auras are very vibrant. And Well, I'm asking as a player who was pretending to be completely new to this. Ah, I see. <laughs> so Maybe it's because they're werewolves. It's because they're werewolves. So, hey. Steven... D okay. Has Steven had... I yeah, I believe yes, but you experience. did not have aura perception at I that didn't have time. Aura perception at that time. All right, but I know they're not vampires. No, you, they're definitely not vampires. All right. So I'm like, that's so that's what I'm going to whisper to the group here. Not vampires. Possibly mage. Possibly lupine. Possibly. All right. Probably not fey. I'm going to assume not fey, but. <laughs> and I what well, I've looked at mages. Because uh -huh. I know I know a couple mages. I'm sure I've checked out their aura just to see what they kind of look like. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like a mage. It doesn't look like a mage. So, not vampires, probably not mages. Something else. Something I haven't come across yet. Not Slenderman. Do you actually say it out loud? I'm whispering it. Not Slenderman. Don't! <laughs> 
No. Uh, Ryan, you start to feel the a little kind of like a tickle in the back of your throat for some reason. I don't say Slenderman out loud. <laughs> I say he who shall Wait, not be named. Nah, our, well, I need confirmation now. Listen, did he say it, Zach, and do I feel the prickle or not? Um, you do feel a little discomfort, yeah. It was freaking out. Because I thought I'm it. I'm freaking out, guys. Okay, don't don't freak out. See, this is why he didn't say it. Steven knows this. Give me a courage roll, Ryan. Oh, good lord. I was joking. <laughs> Five. There's some things you can't joke about. I guess not. It must have been really un uh, unfortunate when they made that new movie. And, like, everyone around him would just say it, and then he would freak the fuck out. Yeah, but that new movie was shit, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd say that lower to the effect it had. <laughs> yeah. He's been a little desensitized. Uh, you managed to keep a hold of yourself. Woo! Yeah, the first time I saw, like, an actual trailer for it, I'm like, wow, this looks like garbage. <laughs> so bad, oh my gosh. The first advertisement I saw for it was actually kind of interesting. It was just, like, just security footage, basically, with the implication that Slenderman is somewhere there, which is, which I thought was kind of effective. It's at least interesting. Um, oh, well, I... that, that's great. It's a shame that wasn't the first. First yeah. trailer they came out with. The first trailer was a shit one. Yeah, and then I'm like, all right, well, this looks interesting. Maybe it won't be bad. Then I looked like an actual trailer, and I'm like, all right, well, this is gonna be terrible. <laughs> all right. So disappointed. All right. Anyway, so we got these guys coming in. Yeah. And um, they meet up with your guy, and after a little bit, um, you can't hear what they're actually saying. Um, but after a little bit, they nod, and then they go on their way. Alrighty. And he comes back inside and says, it looks like everything's a go. Mm-hmm. So that's all uh, I'll need from you tonight, um, but give me a, a place where I can contact you um, for the future. Um, I can give him my cell phone number. All right. Um, we shouldn't need you for a number of nights. You shouldn't need us for a number of nights? Is Hopefully not. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so yes, I would recommend uh, stocking up on as much blood as you can, since uh, once things start to happen, they're going to be happening very quickly. All right. All right. And you guys can head back to your hotel. All righty. So reading through the dossier that you were given also, it has some information on kind of all of French Canada, not just uh, Quebec, and just some kind of details on what they believe the Sabat is like. Mm -hmm. Some facts like that. Um, is there anything else you guys want to do? Hmm. Is it possible... For... Well, one, I'd like to create a couple more blood pills since I seem to have a few nights here. All right, you actually have to spend your own blood I to make I them. I know I do. That's All why right. I'm wondering if we can go somewhere and possibly um, Derek can summon an animal to us so that I can get a point of blood with which to spend. To That's a good blood. idea. Um, yeah, you could, uh, start doing that, um, start making plans get, to do that. Yeah, I was gonna say, we're not gonna get, like, a ton of blood, but I just need, like, a point, because it takes me a whole night to make a blood pill anyway, so. Yeah, so you're gonna be focusing on doing that for a while? Yeah, so I'm gonna This is basically the end of the session. Um, okay. I just want an idea of what okay. your characters are doing, up until the point where they re-enter the story later. So I would, uh. So that's what I would like to do if I can get uh, Derek to... Can I make more than 10 blood pills? Um, I'm limited to 10. I will let you know how many you okay. get. Because um, I'm assuming, are you guys also going to stop feeding using the feeding stations? Or are you going to focus on animals? I would rather animals? not uh, use the feeding stations. All right, because that is going to dramatically decrease how many blood pills you can get. Right, and so that's just what I'm going to be... 
So, so I just want confirmation from the other two that they're also going to stop or... Yeah. Well, I don't know. I no, I don't want to speak for Well, them. Well, so let's explore the alternatives. <laughs> and continuing to use the feeding so stations. So does Terry get to... Um... Eventually, yes. Get to Montreal as well, or, or Quebec. Well, I mean, while we're living there, what are the alternatives to the feeding stations? Um, you drive a couple of hours outside of the city, and uh, Derek summons animals, and you drink uh, animal blood, and then you drive like an hour or two back into the city. Sounds good to me. All right. I just want to make sure everyone knows yeah. that this is a major time investment that you guys are right doing yeah all right but i i just i don't i don't feel comfortable with feeding stations all right it's a major what it's a time commitment oh okay because you guys are going to be spending about half the night um just driving out and then finding animals and then coming back all right so if that's fine with you guys i won't call for any more conscience rolls and your blood will remain uh where it is Okay, and then you'll let me know how many blood pills I Yep. Okay. And uh, that is going to be it for this little mini session. Uh, when we come back, we will be back with the Sabat characters in Montreal itself. Miles will be here, and we can finish up with your assault on an old lady's mansion. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. All that's right. where we ended, <laughs> because... Um... Because Lysia and Joseph and Hassan are breaking into the old woman's house while Jean's like, she's just an old lady. Ironically, Jean is uh, probably like, oh, you know, I wish I could be with the Camarilla where they respect humanity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile. <laughs> Meanwhile, at five humanity, he'd be fine with the change of the bed. That's true. Jean probably, well, he's trying to increase it, so he wouldn't be okay with it. <laughs> He would yeah. know intellectually. He also intellectually knows that it would be wrong. That is wrong, but he does really and, feel like that But on an extra level for Jean, he on, knows on an intellectual level that he needs to uh, <laughs> desperately try to find something to cling on to. All right. <laughs> I cannot now, instead, wait. Instead, he becomes absolutely disillusioned that all vampires, that he is destined for, that he will one day become like all the other vampires and he will not respect humanity, and poor Haru. <laughs> well, Haru's a uh, very clear reason for him uh, to realize he shouldn't come to that conclusion, though. I can't Thank wait you. until Ryan kills Haru. That's <laughs> gonna be fun. <laughs> wow. The thing is, if if John does come to that conclusion, then Joseph can just dominate Haru into accepting it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Shut up, you. <laughs> It's actually kind of ironic because you, we, I said it as kind of a joke, but uh, being one of the mortal agents of the Sabat Haru would be uh, a definite target for your Camarilla characters once they reach Montreal. Shit. Hmm. <laughs> well, we'll see how that goes. I better get Ryan's humanity. <laughs> <laughs> Is Berka like a? Uh, I mean, it's hard like combatant. Uh, um, she's an agent of the Sabbat. Yeah, she's, she's not a combatant, um, but she is uh, an agent of the Sabbat, so she is someone that they're going to murder um, in order uh, to weaken their ties with the mortal world. Mm. Well, Derek will feel bad about killing her. Derek don't know if he can he's do so that. Well, we all know if he'll feel bad. We haven't made the conscience rule yet, so... Uh, true, <laughs> I know he's going to be absolutely willing to. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the way Star Wars plays. Yeah, I'm willing to do it, and well, I'll just hope I feel bad about it later. Believe Notice in the heart Steven of the cards. He didn't even feed from the people, so he didn't have to make the conscience roll because I chose as a player not to go there. Derek, of course, saddle me. <laughs> and My it's heart hurt for them people. Yeah, and it's only after Stephen came up with another plan <laughs> that he stopped. That's just, oh, remember, Derek, you can summon animals. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I fed all two people before you. Before I, uh, you that <laughs> before I reminded mind me. you what your powers were. Yes, okay. All right. <laughs> so we will divvy out some experience points. Uh, first off, uh, tell us what you learned. We'll start with Steven. Um, I learned that my superiors are pretty nasty beings with the whole tra human trafficking and... 
And Ryan. Uh, I think this is Ryan's first experience with feeding stations. Yeah? Well, I didn't know this was possible. Can we do this in the basement, Stephen? <laughs> Technology. <laughs> You can just imprison people and then ration them. We could just chain them to the wall. It's so convenient. It's like mechanized farming, but with and, human blows. Yeah, and then I wouldn't have to leave the house at all. <laughs> it's true. Well, well, he knows, deep down, he knows that Lisa would never approve. Lu Lucy. Lucy. You don't not. even know her name. Lucy would, Lucy would never. Listen, I haven't played as Ryan in ages. Give me a break. Well, that's the thing, is you're finally off on your own, and you're like, oh, I don't have to care what that bitch thinks anymore. <laughs> well, well, Ball and Chain well, maybe, is left. Yeah, but maybe Ryan is starting to realize that oh. he's kind of hearing her voice in his head now, even when she's not there. It's true. They're telling him down. what not to do. Yep. Because of the blood bond, you can't escape Lucy. her no matter how far you run. Lucy has become his conscience. Hmm. Which is good, because he doesn't have any yep. dots in conscience. Yeah, no, he doesn't. So he gets a dot I've for Lucy. I've got two conscience, thank you very oh, much. Wow. He's got two. So you can roll three dice because you'll get a dot for Lucy. Actually, and what, uh... that's what I, actually, that's what I'll spend one of my... Uh, I have five experience points. Maybe I'll spend four to get up to three conscience. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, next up, five humanity. Well, we'll see about that. I let you buy virtues at any time, but uh, you're gonna. You did use the feeding station, so it's gonna be a while before we can justify the next humanity. Dog. I only used it once. You still used it. Twice. Yeah, used Dad, it twice. no, it was twice. Yeah. Yeah. Mary was keeping uh, no. track. No, it was once. No, it was the first night we went there and found them. Yikes. And then the second night before we went to uh, meet with the werewolves, we had to come prepared, so you fed a couple points again. I didn't add those. Well, well you can add them. Shit. Because, yeah, Stallworth had to do another conscience roll. Yep. I thought I said I wouldn't take it. I mean, I guess if you I'm don't want sure to. I'm sure I said I wouldn't take it. We have it I on thought, camera. I thought you All right. said... I, I was if you don't say, want to take it, you don't have to add Steven the blood points. Because Steven suggested that you, you did because we didn't have another way of doing things at that point. And I didn't want you freaking out while we were... You still used it once, so you're yeah, still not upgrading it. your humanity. It's up to you whether or not you yeah, want whatever. to take the two blood points or not. Yeah, whatever. Alright. I thought that was a solid argument that it was to avoid frenzy, but whatever. Well, yeah, that's why you didn't... Uh, you're not losing humanity. I mean, yeah, you're not losing it. It's just gaining it is really, really hard, is what Zach is saying. This game's too hard. I'm gonna complain <laughs> about it. <laughs> It's he's complaining about the morality requirements I know. Good God. for humanity five. <laughs> for you. Yikes. Alright. Yeah. So Um And then what did right. Derek learn? I was gonna say I wouldn't like Derek learn. I learned about the uh the strategy of uh just you know, if you can't feed on humans in certain places, just call animals to you. All right. You only learned that now. Well, you only got the summoning <laughs> yeah. power. Yeah. Maybe yeah. this is where it happened. Like St Stephen's, like we really got to figure out something other than these feeding stations. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Derek, you're good with animals. You think you could call some to us? I don't know. Let me try it. Wow. So I'm not going to uh, have you guys vote for role playing. I'm just going to give uh, everyone uh, five experience points for this. Alrighty. Can we spend them? Uh, yeah, sure. Five humanity. <laughs> just keep, just keep increasing the stats on the villains of the main chronicle. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> the villain. Steven's not a villain. Well, <laughs> in the Montreal Chronicle, yeah, he is. He's gonna be a villain, huh? Okay, I got six points. I think villain's the wrong word since we're playing bad guys. Yeah, because we're playing as bad guys in Montreal, like... Well, you're saying that, David, but your character is un actually better than your Camarilla character in terms of morality. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, John's a clear exception. Everyone else is worse. Yeah. I don't know. I think Joseph's a pretty good guy. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's, a, he's so, an so worse, I swear to God. Guy. Joseph's a cool guy. 
Stars, I never realized how much of a troll you were. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man! Something, something, something has changed with you in this. Uh, in this, in this movie. He's come into himself. He has. Is this the real Stone? <laughs> he's been pretending. Or just a fantasy. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty much a real Star Wars. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, like, Crap. seven or eight years in, we, we see him. Yep, this is him. He's barely human. <laughs> 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 Alright, I'm going to end the recording here. So, see you guys later. Bye-bye. See ya. Alrighty.